Using ChatGPT as a joke writing tool, applying the skills to the practice topic, a headline topic of President Trump felony conviction. We're now going to imagine that we have a specific topic we would like to write jokes about. Remembering that creating a topic, coming up with a topic, usually one of the biggest first hurdles people have to joke construction, often because they pick topics that are way too broad, therefore they can't see the nuts and bolts of any particular phrase and can't then adjust some of the assumptions in those nuts and bolts, causing incongruity incongruity being the ground basis of most joke creation. So one way, of course, to pick the topic is to look at news headlines. The news headlines itself can often be your initial setup, your initial prompt, or at least the seed on which you can then build up your prompts. You can look at other comedians to see what they're doing in terms of their headlines and see if you want to go in like in a different direction with the same headline. You can also use many other prompts. I think one of the best prompts is to use normal common phrases like the going gets tough, the tough gets going, and so on. You can look those up on the internet. They have preconceived structures that everybody knows and therefore you can just break the that format of the phrase and that's one way that you can kind of practice joke creation now we're going to be looking at the trump conviction and i know this is a very political kind of topic which to me is more interesting uh than picking a topic that has no it's just for laughs it's almost harder to do things just for laugh if you don't have any kind of angle on it so i find that to be more interesting i have my own uh, political views which i'm sure will come through on it but again the basis here is just to think about joke construction and like i say if you pick something that you have some kind of angle going at you want to create some kind of story i think that's actually a little bit easier some people some comedians kind of look down on that they say well we're just here for the laughs we're not here for any kind of political judgment or any any moral judgment or any kind of purpose to the story but a joke is a mini story and if there's absolutely no purpose to the story you know what you have is a basically like a fart joke or a burping joke right it doesn't right that's basically which is hard to create constructively right those are just kind of funny things that just are you know or whatever anyway so we're gonna say first thing that we might do is take the headline so we're gonna take the headline that trump was convicted of 34 felonies and so on and so forth now we can use chat gpt now we you could just ask chat gpt to say hey here's the headline trump was convicted of a felony and we could just say give me jokes related to that and i'll show you what chat gpt comes up with it's not you can do that but it's probably not the best way to seed chat gpt to create a routine from you might get a couple jokes that are kind of funny that way or you might get stuff that you can adjust but the list structure uh, is one thing that we will examine as well as just trying to get the prepositions and assumptions. And so this first one we'll look at just saying, let's get the, the, the assumptions that are being made by the headline. So I'm imagining we're learning, we're using the headline as a prompt, President Trump convicted of a felony or the president is a felon or something like that. And trying to say, what are the implicit and explicit assumptions from that taking apart all the things that we have to have in our mind in order for that sentence to make sense. And notice when you start thinking about this, there's a ton of assumptions, right? You're going to say, well, he's the president of what? I'm assuming it's the president of a country. I'm assuming it's the president of the United States. It doesn't have to be. It didn't say that explicitly. He could have been the president of, you know, the dogs lovers club or something. You know, we don't know. And so he, but that's an assumption. We assume that the United States is a democratic republic because he's the president. And usually when you're the president of something, you're the president of a republic. We assume it's democratic that an election happened because he's the president. You, so you would think that he would, if he was the president, he got elected. And I'm calling him the president. You can call him the ex-president or the future president, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure. I'm just saying. I put in pres I'm trying to do the just position of a president and felony because I think that's the thing that's going to lead towards you know the the most incongruity for joke creation and whatnot. 
All right, so then, so if I, if we go into uh, ChatGPT, I, th I say that right now, I'm using four. You don't have to use the latest version. You can use like the free version. But I just said, president conviction of a uh, felony. I said, list 50 explicit and implicit propositions or assumptions from this phrase, president convicted of a felony. Now, notice I put 50 because I want it to give me a bunch, a lot. I don't want just five of them. I want a whole bunch of them, and then I'm going to read through them and see what we get. So then I got all this stuff. So it did 50, and then here we go. So I copied that over to uh, Word, and then I'm going to use those as my lead or my possibly you can think of it as like your setup line that you will then break. And some of these assumptions will read in this particular case almost like you're doing a narrative with like a reporter or you can imagine in my opinion i'm would be more on the side that this this whole thing looks like a sham to me and therefore if i was talking to someone else like a reporter or like a like a democrat or someone that thinks that that there was no problem with the trial it was worked perfectly then that would be like a conversation going back and forth between the two that's one way you can kind of think of it so let's look at a couple of these that it gave us uh, role and identity. So the term president is used, which explicitly refers to someone holding or having held a high governmental position. So president worth assuming here in the context of the country. But we could say it didn't say that explicitly. So we could break that assumption. So he is actually the president of something stupid. You could say he's not the president of something serious. I'm going to break that assumption. What's the alternative story I could make to break that assumption? He's actually the president of something stupid like clowns. And it's like, yeah, he's the president of, of the retarded clown club or something like that, right? That's a pretty stupid joke, but that's the assumption that you're basically breaking and you can kind of create a story on that. So the legal judgment convicted suggests a legal process that has concluded. So we can we can we can break that assumption if we wanted to. We could say he was convicted. If I hear he was convicted in a United States court, I'm going to say, hey, that was a you know that sounds like a legal process has taken place. You can refute that assumption, right? You could say it was not at all legal. The, the evidence of that. And so then if I come up with a joke like that, so I'm going to say now I can just refute that assumption. And you can think of this assumption as the headline. I could say the president was convicted of a felony, which implies that a formal legal process took place. Or I can change the setup and like I'm talking to someone else where they're saying, hey, look, a, a, the other person would say, look, a legal process has taken place and the president was convicted, right? Laying the premise explicitly out instead of implicitly. And then you can come up with a joke to refute that, right? So the evidence for that case is about as reliable as Hillary Clinton gathering up her emails, right? And Hillary Clinton famously deleted all her emails when she was asked to get her emails together or whatnot. But you can, you can then refute it in a comical way, right? So instead of just saying, well, that's, that's not true. It wasn't uh, at all fair, right? You want to say, well, yeah, yeah, that thing was about as fair. I'm using a comparison, an analogy now. It's about as fair as a, you know, a, a crocodile convicting a, a rabbit as to whether he should eat it or not. Or, you know, some, you know, some kind of analogy would to to say it in a in a way that's more dynamic, right? Pictorial for, focused. All right, another another assumption they came up with. ChatGPT says type of crime, felony indicates a serious crime more severe than a misdemeanor. So they gave him a felony. They didn't give him a misdemeanor. They didn't give him a slap on the, they gave him 34 or something, 30 some felonies or something like that. So then we're gonna say, that sounds serious. So that's gonna be the, the, the assumption. You can refute this assumption basically saying, well, no, that's not serious. But if you just say that it was a felony, like again, you can set up the, the premise of saying, President Trump was convicted of 30 some felonies or something like that. And you could say, yeah, felonies aren't serious these days, right? That's kind of a joke. You can say that, yeah, I guess felonies aren't serious anymore these days because it sounds serious, but it's not, it doesn't sound. Or you, or you just say that a bit more uh, with a little bit more flair or color. You can say like, wow, I, I thought felonies was like a real thing. I thought a felony was like a real thing. Apparently now you can get 34 of them for, for, for miscategorizing your travel expenses under meals and entertainment, right? 
So now I'm just trying to basically refute the, the proposition felony is a serious thing. Someone must have done something bad by saying, wow, I guess felony isn't a serious thing. Apparently you can get 34 of them for miscategorizing your travel expenses under meals and entertainment <laughs> or something like that, right? I'm just trying to get a story that now refutes it in a colorful pictorial way that we can imagine. So uh, jurisdiction. So the, the conviction applies to a legal system under which this process occurred. So jurisdiction, as far as I know, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I think that refers to where the person is being convicted. So we could say, hey, they had jurisdiction to make the judgment and so on. And again, you can refute that. And the, the most common way to say would be, so again, I could set up the premise. I'm sorry, I'm saying again all the time. I'll try to stop that. But you could set up the premise and say, Donald Trump was convicted of a felony. And we would assume that they had jurisdiction that he was tried in a legal place in order for them to legitimately be able to do that. Or you can further make that implicit assumption explicit and possibly with a conversation as though you're having a conversation with someone that disagrees with you and you could practice like you could present that different ways and they could say yeah, like the, the jurisdiction they had legal jurisdiction to convict donald trump now you could say no they didn't that's crazy I had no jurisdiction to do that or you could do that with a more color then you come up with a story that would refute that in a more colorful way so, so how is it they sued him for a federal charge in the bluest place in the country, meaning the most Democratic place when he's a Republican, where the DA, DA actually ran on a platform of wielding lawfare against one particular man, right? So you're saying he had jurisdiction to do it. And then the refutation is, no, wait a second. He's the president of the country. And you'd think that they charged him on federal charges, but then he was put into a court and the most democratic place in the world. And and then he, in a place where the D.A. actually ran a political campaign targeting one individual person, which seems a little like don't have your right. You can come up with a story to kind of tell it more than like, yeah, they didn't have jurisdiction. Right. That's OK. So due process. The conviction applies that a legal proceeding took place according to law. So if we said Donald Trump was convicted of 34 felony counts of blah, blah or something, then the assumption is, well, we have a good American legal system and therefore the legal system must have gone through due process. It must have gone through the proper steps in order to come up with the end result. That's what we if we that's what the assumption would be. Now, you could break that assumption by simply saying there was no due process here. Are you kidding me? And that would be kind of funny, but you'd want to do it with a more, I want to come up with a story that refutes the premise. I could make that assumption more, more in the premise. Donald Trump was convicted by 37 counts. Due process is an implicit assumption. I could make it more explicit. Due process what is usually what we consider to be happening in our legal system, if I wanted to make it more specific, and then refute that with a story. Something like, wow, due process in this country has become doo-doo process, like it's crap process, right? Due process is, when is it that in the United States, due process has become doo-doo process? Apparently after Joe Biden visited that, that last ceremony, I guess, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> So nothing about the process of this case looked normal for crying out loud, right? You can you make a story that says the thing. You don't just refute it like like you're in a normal argument. Guilty verdict. There was a determination of guilt. Obviously, that's an assumption. You can refute that assumption. I didn't come up with a story for that. Evidence. Evidence was presented that led to the conviction. So the idea, if you just say as your as your prompt, as your setup. Donald Trump was convicted of 34 or whatever counts of felony convictions. Then we would assume, if you believe in the court systems and whatnot, that there was evidence to, to get there. And then you can refute that implicit assumption. We didn't explicitly say, look, there was evidence that led to this conviction and so on and so forth. We just said he was convicted. 
And if you have faith in the process, you would assume that there was evidence. We could further make that implicit assumption explicit in the setup, saying that they're saying that apparently they say that the that, that evidence was presented, which led to the conviction of Trump. And then if you want to refute that assumption, then you could say, well, there was no evidence for the conviction. That's going to be what you're refuting. But you probably, again, in a, ju- sorry, I said again, again, I'm saying again, again, but you probably don't want to say it in that way. You want to come up with a story that refutes that implicit or explicit assumption. So, so wow, convicting on such skimpy evidence is like executing someone for being a, being a witch uh, because they, they float in water. So I'm just trying to make an analogy now to make a more colorful way to, to refute that assumption. I'm just, I'm making these up fairly quickly so I can, if I like that, I can trim it down. But I'm just basically saying, uh, convicting on such skimpy evidence, meaning I'm refuting the fact that there's enough evidence, would be like executing someone for being a witch because they float in water, which is something that in my mind, I, I was seeing a Monty Python skit. I was trying to come up with some comparison where in Monty Python, which is like an old British comedy thing, in the and when they were they were prosecuting on in the 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 witches or whatever and and they came up with this stupid logical argument well if she floats then that means that she's a witch and then we then we're gonna kill her or something and so that was and then again and now as i thought of that i thought of this movie clip so then that movie clip now i can find that and add it as a as a tag uh, to if I wanted to make that into a into a joke, defense. Uh, the president likely had an opportunity to defend themselves. So if we just say the premise, Donald Trump was convicted of 30 whatever counts of felony, we assume in the legal system that he had the ability to defend themselves because that's a core tenet in the American legal system. You could make that explicit. Look, Donald Trump had the ability to defend himself. You might be arguing with someone else in your joke setup who says that or something like that, making the implicit assumption explicit. And then you can refute that, the refutation, the president had no real chance at justice. So that's what you're going to say. But you're not going to say it just like that, typically. Then you're going to make a story that colorfully refutes the implicit or explicit assumption of the statement. So that court case was like a trial by combat. Where, where, where they had to send the guy out to fight 20 lions, naked, hand tied behind his back, only able to pathetically wield his small, scared, shriveled mace by shrinking his hips for defense. So basically, I'm just trying to paint a picture where his defense wasn't really valid, right? His defense was as valid as throwing the guy into the lion's bin with his naked his hands trapped behind his back with his little mace that he has to swing around by shaking his hips right that's about as de- good a defense that he had and then i don't know i'm just trying. so then the next one court authority a court or judicial body had the authority to convict so if we say donald trump was convicted by 30 some counts of of felony or whatever we assume that the court had the authority to do so That's an implicit assumption, which we could make explicit if we were setting this up as an argument. And we can say the other person is the protagonist is saying the the court case had full authority to arrest Donald Trump. If we want to make it explicit, which we don't need to, because we can basically just say the headline and it's implicitly assumed. It's up to you if you want to make it explicit or not. So then we can refute that the court did not have authority. So that's not very funny, though, to just say, I refute it. The court didn't have authority. It would be more funny if we said that in a colorful way that would imply that the court didn't have authority. Something like, uh, is, it ju- is it just me or was the convicted on felony charge in a state court without the power to do so by a judge who abandoned proper due process and in instructing their jury or something like that? So I'm just trying to paint out a bigger story than wait a sec, no, they didn't have the authority to do so, right? They had, they had the, the authority to do so. How is it they had the authority to do convict him of something that looks to me like it was a felony case, but they convicted him in state court, and then the judge basically instructed the jury in somewhat absurd ways, it looks like to me, 
and so you're refuting it with a colorful story. The court had about as much authority to convict Trump as, and then you come up with a comparison, right? The court has about as much authority to convict Trump as, as Hillary Clinton has to convict someone for mishandling her servers or something like that because they wiped out her emails or something, you know, like, you know, try to come up with an absurd comparison uh, story. So legal representation, the president was likely represented by a lawyer. So if we say Donald Trump was convicted of 30 some counts of felony, we assume that he had legal defense, which you could make explicit by arguing with a with a protagonist that says, look, President Trump had, he's, he's a rich, he had all the lawyers he needed to, to support him. And then you could say Trump was not represented by a lawyer. You could basically argue against that. That would be tough to argue against. But you can also say something, you can twist it a little bit like, although he was, he has lawyers, Trump just does his own thing out there. In other words, I'm just saying, the assumption is that he's being defended by lawyers, but the reality is, Trump doesn't listen to his lawyers. Trump, Trump just goes out there and says whatever Trump's going to say, right? He, if, if it, so it's not really like he's being defended by the In some cases, he's doing his own thing. So some more assumptions. Loss of credibility. The conviction might lead people to doubt the president's integrity or decision or decision making. So if you said that the President Trump was convicted by 30 some counts of felony, then an implicit assumption might be that he's going to lose credibility. And you might make that explicit by arguing with a, pro with a protagonist that makes that explicit. Look, the president's been convicted of felonies. He's going to lose his credibility with the people. And then, of course, you can refute that in a joke format. So if you go against that assumption, the conviction did not lead people to doubt Trump's credibility would be the alternative story, which if you just say like that, isn't really funny. But if you made a story to refute the implicit or explicit assumption, the conviction led people to, to doubt the legal system, right? The assumption is the conviction led people to doubt Trump. It's like, wait a second. The conviction led people to doubt, no, the conviction led people to doubt the legal system. Honestly, where, where has justice gone? I don't know, but, but I ain't finding it in the Manhattan criminal court, that's for sure, right? So we just basically twisted the assumption and said, hey, wait a second, that, that sounds weird. I, I think that there's doubt has been lost, but I don't think it's based on Trump. I think it's doubt of the legal system. And I sure as heck think that there's now doubt with the Manhattan criminal court. I'll tell you that. Anyway, impact on office. If in office, the conviction would impact their ability to govern. So if we say Trump was convicted by 30 some counts of felony or so on and so forth, the implicit assumption would be that's going to impact his ability to govern the country. You could make that explicit by arguing with a protagonist who says, hey, look, he's been convicted of 30 counts. That's going to mean that he can't govern the country effectively. And then, of course, you can refute that. The case would not impact Trump. Uh, or ability to, in any negative way. I didn't write that very well. And that, but you can't just say that, right? Because then it would just be like an argument, like a debate. You, you wanna basically imply that in a more colorful type of way to the implicit or explicit assumption, which could be a more joke type format. So if anything, the case would show Trump is not in the pocket of any of these corrupt politicians or countries, unlike most of those bribe-taking, pandering, dog-faced pony soldiers, pulled pony soldiers, sons of trouts. So I'm just trying to paint a story saying, if the argument is that Trump is, is the, he's the one that's gonna lose credibility and just kind of turn that around and say, well, if anything, the case would show Trump is not in the pocket of any of these corrupt politicians or countries, unlike most of those bribe-taking, pandering, dog-faced, pony soldier, sons of trout. I say sons, sons of trout, because I don't know what I'm thinking with that. Anyway, Robert, <laughs> we've, we've got the public, the public reaction. There's likely significant public interest and reaction to this event. So if we say, headline, Donald Trump convicted of 30 some counts of felony. Well, it's a headline implicitly assuming that people care because it's in the headline, which you could make explicit by arguing with a protagonist with a with a protagonist. 
I'm getting that wrong, right? An antagonist. I think you're supposed to be the protagonist in your own story or so. <laughs> anyway, you argue with you argue with the other guy and they're saying and they and they could make that explicit saying, "Hey, look, that there's going to be pu- there's public interest in this which you can refute." And the refutation would just basically be there would not be public interest in in this. And then you can't just say that or you could but then you have to say why you have to come up with a story as to why the assumption is incorrect. So you might say something like, why would the public react at this point to a felony conviction of Donald Trump? We see how the Democrats play ball. The only pitch they got is to throw the ball right at your head and pay off the umpire to call it a strike. Luckily, their arm is so weak they can only throw 50 miles an hour at this point. So I'm trying to paint a story to say, hey, look, why would people react to this kind of story? It's like being shocked at a Jerry Springer show when the two people get up and fight each other. You know what's going to happen. You know the attack's going to happen here. And it's ridiculous. Turn the channel off. No one cares anymore. Political ramifications. The conviction could have serious political consequences for the president's party of administration. So the assumption being, if you say the president was convicted of 30 some counts of felony, assumption, well, that's gonna have bad implications to his party. You could make that explicit by having your antagonist say, say, say it, right? Well, that's gonna cause a problem to his party. And then of course you can refute that. So what would be the opposite of that? There will be no significant consequence or they will be positive. You can say there's not gonna be consequences or those consequences will be positive. You don't wanna just state that though, you wanna create a story as to where or when that contrary assumption will be true, right? So yeah, there will be ramifications. The public will finally realize the current emperor has no clothes. and uh, or let's see, has no clothes. Well, actually, he does have clothes, but they have been seriously soiled. So, in other words, it's not going to have negative ramifications on Trump. It's going to have negative ramifications on the current person running the country, similar to people seeing the emperor who has no clothes on revealing himself as silly. Actually, he does have clothes on, but he soiled them quite egregiously and that's just as bad that's just as embarrassing historical record this event would be notable part of the presidential historical legacy so if we say headline donald trump has been convicted of 30 counts of blouse felony and so on we assume that that is going to have historical significance possibly we could make that implicit assumption explicit in the setup by arguing with somebody else that says it explicitly or something like that or just saying these guys think this they they think this and then you can go on with your your refutation of it it will not be historical or will be historical for for the corruption in other words that's the assumption we can break that assumption not by just stating it i'm trying to state here the opposite as plainly as i can so that i can then build a story that will that will create a world where that is the case which might be the real world it might not be because the joke structure is just trying to create a scenario where whatever the assumption is is not the case right so in this case we could say yeah it will be historical his uh, historic honestly if we still remember Watergate for decades, the corruption will be will be rememberable even longer. So in other words, the assumption here is that it's going to be a historical thing that will be negative towards Trump because he was convicted of felony. But if we twist that, we're going to say, well, no, it will be historical, but it's going to be historical like Watergate was historical. Biden being the bad guy who's attacking with political lawfare or legal lawfare his his political opponent right that would be the twist so media coverage the event would attract extensive media coverage so if we say that donald trump was convicted on 30 some counts implicitly obviously that has attracted media coverage because it's a headline story we could make that an explicit thing within our setup by arguing with someone or saying hey look the media clearly is attracted to this particular story kind of like again like a jerry springer would be attracted to people that like to stand up and fight each other over who over who's 
who impregnated who or something or something and so 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 you could say it will not it will not or maybe and for different reasons so you could say create a story yeah it will attract media coverage but maybe not for the reasons so i'm i'm actually there's an implicit assumption happening here if there's media coverage the implicit assumption is that it's legitimate that the media people are attracted to it and my my refutation of that implicit assumption is no the media people are scum right they just want <laughs> of course they're 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 yeah it will attract media coverage dang hacks will will disparage whoever george soros has put on the hit list right so i'm i'm gonna say well yeah of course they're they're george soros has put out a put out a bounty on trump's head or something i'm not i'm not again i'm picking on george soros i'm not like a trying to make a conspiracy theory I'm, but you know i'm just saying yeah they'll whoever the hits out on whoever's whoever they can collect the bounty from and you know that is clearly out there that's who they're gonna attack just like any kind of scumbag bounty hunter for crying out loud internal reaction other nations might react formally or informally to the conviction so now we're thinking about if donald trump president or ex-president convicted of felonies then what's going to be the Im other countries are going to be impacted by that and so again we can refute that and say that they won't be affected or we can refute the implicit assumption of that assumption which is that we should care what other countries think right and so so for example if they say well look other countries are going to look poorly on it uh normally i would say who cares what europeans think but these days i think they are getting less crazy woke than we are a sure sign we need to right the ship so in other words normally i would say okay i'm supposed to care what europe thinks about us they're crazier than we are that would be my normal kind of reaction to break kind of that assumption so honestly if, if we need to take lessons in common sense from the french we're in serious trouble right so i'm just kind of creating a story of, of saying hey look you, your 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 assumption of how of of the other person's thinking of what we are is that's where the distortion is you need to rethink <laughs> that process so president so this sets a legal political precedence regarding handling high profile figures so if we say that trump was convicted of 30 some counts then the implicit assumption is that might set a new precedent because this took headlines might change things going forward we can then refute that by saying it has no it has not set precedent so we can say no it doesn't or maybe in a different way than is applied implied by the phrase in other words people are going to assume implicitly by this phrase that it well they might have implicit assumptions on how it's going to impact court cases of high profile people and so it sure does have a have have a precedent regarding presidential conviction and it's not a good one the new president uh the new president anything goes it's just a reality tv show so in other words there there are no precedents anymore anything if we're whoever's president anything goes it's just a reality tv show there's no court case there's no due process it's just hit the other guy and and see if you can mock him on the media this is very <laughs> So moral judgment, people might make moral judgment about the president's character. So that's gonna be if we say the president was convicted by 30 some counts of felony, the assumption is it's gonna impact his moral character. Now we can, we can refute that by saying it won't impact his moral character or we can say it, it will impact his, nor, his moral character in a positive way. Because notice here, if you were arguing with someone and they say, hey, look, this felony conviction is going to impact the moral character or the perception of the moral character the implicit assumption which they didn't say explicitly is that it's going to be negatively impactful and that's the assumption we can we can twist and say yeah it's going to impact their moral their moral character assumption but it's going to be a positive right not a negative so they sure will make judgments about his character any man still standing after this political hack job is a strong candidate we would be proud to have run the country honestly holding a court case just to make the legal system into a jerry springer show putting a porn star on stage just to believe to belittle a political rival despicable right so i'm just trying to create paint a picture of a story saying 
yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be judgments, but I think the judgments on on the other guy, right? the guy that's doing the the hack job, not the one that's getting hacked, right? I mean, but personally, anyway, partisan response. So we so I think that's most this one I had here. What was this one? Legal appeals. The possibility of an appeal or other legal action is implied. So 34 counts of felony conviction headline, we would assume maybe there's gonna be an appeals process because we know how the court system works. There, it takes forever and there's always these appeals and so on and so forth. So we could break that by saying, well, there's not gonna be an appeal or we can play with the implicit assumption of what appeal is, possibly even playing wordplay on appeal itself. So we can say, so there, there's not, there's not just possibility for appeal, there's a strong possibility for a Paul. So it's not so right, so I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to do a little wordplay. Yeah, yeah there, there's possibly, probably gonna be appeal, but there's also gonna be a lot of appall out there, I'll tell you that. So they, they only appall the matters, at, they only appeal the matters at this point is the appeal by the people driven by the people's appall. So now I'm just trying to play some word game. So, so appeal to the courts, that's obviously not the place to go at this point in time, given the, the, the state of the court system being able to handle a presidential trial. The only appeal that matters at this point is appeal by the people, driven by the people's appall, right? So meaning voting, they're gonna have to vote. We're gonna have to decide with a vote, right? Not with the court system at this point, it seems. So effect on governance. The president's ability to govern effectively could be compromised. That's an implicit assumption if we say, once again, I'm doing the again thing again, if the president was convicted of 34 counts and so on, that would be an implicit assumption. We can refute that. Ability will not be compromised or may maybe in a different way. So I could say directly, no, his ability won't be compromised, or I can change the idea of once again, it's saying it's compromised implying negative. You can change it to a positive. So the ability to govern will improve because the political hacks have shown themselves for what they are. We can now sniff them out and eliminate them given the fact, the fact that they crap their pants, right? So the idea would be, he's not gonna be negative affected, he's gonna be positively affected because all the little cockroaches have now shown themselves to be little cockroaches and you can sniff them out because they crap their pants. Any case, security. Increased security concerns might arise from, from the individual. So we can refute that. Uh, personal stress, the president is likely under significant personal stress. So if we say, hey, look, the president has been convicted of 30 some counts of felony. Well, the assumption is, well, he's gonna be under a lot of stress at that point in time. And so we can refute that or we can turn it around a little bit, adjusting and doing some just positions on that assertion. So we might say something like, yeah, he's under stress, but look how the man handled this. You got, you, you got it uh, at, at least a little. You got, it, you got to respect it, I think is what I was trying to say, at least a little. Honestly, most anybody else under the same stress would probably crap their pants. So, I'm, <laughs> so we're painting the story. Yeah, he, he's under stress, but look at the guys handling it pretty well. I mean, you got to have a little respect. They're throwing everything, the kitchen sink, they're wheeling around like it's a mace at his face and he's handling it pretty well. Whereas if anybody else was in there, they'd probably crap their pants. I'm sorry to keep referring to the crapping of the pants thing, but I mean, like, honestly, can you imagine if Trump actually crapped his pants? Like they, and don't, you need to have respect little, we need to be gentlemanly here and we would never use that, you know, they would, <laughs> it'd be the funny, like they would be going after him for like, it'd be crazy. Anyway, family impact. The president's family might also be affected by the public and legal scrutiny. So in other words, if we say the headline, Trump convicted of 30 some felony counts, well, we can assume that there's gonna be an impact on the family, which we can make explicit by arguing with an antagonist or something like that. And then of course we can refute that and say, well, no, they won't be affected. Or we can do a comparison or say they're gonna be affected in ways different than the implicit assumptions, which of course is that they're gonna be negatively affected. So we could say a story, something like, yeah, the family must be going through some hell as well, but again, they seem to hold together fairly well. Honestly, many other sons whose dads are in a stressful situation may turn into, they could possibly turn into crackhead, woman abusing, gun-toting scumbags. 
but but these kids seem to be looking pretty good, right? So again, you're kind of doing a comparison thing, painting a story. Hey, look at this guy's kids versus the other guy's kids. I mean, who's handling the stress, right? I mean, so so financial costs. There are likely substantial financial costs related to legal defense and possibly fines. So if we say Trump's convicted of 30 some counts of felony, we have to assume that he's got to pay for lawyers and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be costly. And the assumption is they might he might not be able to handle that financially, right, or something. So we could refute that, say, no, uh, there, there, there are no play with the impact or we can play with the impact of those conclusions, those implicit assumptions, which is that he's going to be crippled financially. They find, you know, they're going to cripple him with this lawfare and he's not going to be able to, to afford it or whatever. And we could say something like, yeah, uh, there are legal costs. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's that's why no other man has been able to stand up to the political corruption. So we're basically saying, well, yeah, it's cost, but it's a political corruption thing. Again, you got to have some respect for Trump's response to the question, how are you going to pay for the millions of dollars in political hack prosecution lawfare? And Mr. Trump's response is with cash. You know, you, you got to have a little respect for that. They're, they're charging him like millions of dollars and just nonsense cases he's paying his lawyers he's got to pay off you know these court cases and whatnot how are you going to handle that yeah i'll write him a check what, what do you think and i'll come in the next day what do you think i'm going to historical comparisons comparisons might be drawn with other leaders who faced legal issues so the assumption he's convicted of 30 some counts you would assume implicitly he's going to be compared with other people historically so so we could break that there will not be comparisons or change the meaning. In other words, if a protagonist says that, or if an antagonist says that, <laughs> then it means that it's negative. He's going to be compared negatively. So we could twist that and say, well, yeah, he'll be compared to other leaders who withstood political lawfare, right? Who withstood corruption. He's going to come out on top of that. He's going to be looking good, possibly, as well, how you can change it. Again, I know I'm getting, you know, I'm taking sides on this on my angles of it, of course. You can do what you could do the same thing on the other side or the other. You could, however, you want to alter it. The tools can be used for good or for bad, right? I'm going to try to use it for good here. That's why my stories are going to anyway. Policies uh, uh, stagnation. The president's policy initiates uh, might might stall due to the distraction or loss of political capital. So we can say no. Uh, uh, have you looked at the polls? Political capital is going up because people see the corruption. So in other words, they're going to say he's going to lose political capital because he's been convicted of a felony, implicit assumption. Well, it looks like the polls are going up, you know, so, so we can make a story on that. Le legitimately questions. Questions might arise about the legitimacy of the president's past actions. So we can refute that. That would be an implicit assumption if he's now a felon. So people will not be questioning past actions or change the meaning. That's what we can do to refute that if we wanted to make a story that adjusts that. The people will, will be question, uh, questions past actions of the current president, given, given the uh, attacking of political rivals using the legal system. So, yeah, there's going to be questions of presidents. But instead of Trump, which is the implicit assumption, they're going to be questioning Biden because Biden's the one who's actually doing the wrong deed by manipulating the once beautiful legal system in a corrupt way, which is causing us to have whole questions about all kinds of things that we used to trust. Support base reaction. The president's support base might react defensively or feel betrayed. So we could say, well, okay, well then, what's gonna be the opposite of that? They won't act defensively, or we can play on the words of defensive and say, well, no, the support base well, are going to react offensively while the current president's support base will vanish like dust in the wind or something. I'm just trying to create a story that is the opposite or breaking some kind of assumption. So civic trust, public trust in the civic institutions might be affected. That's the assumption if you hear felony conviction. So we could disagree and say it's not going to be affected, creating a story to imply that. Yeah, you think the trust of civic institutions might be destroyed, meaning we took it further yeah, it might be affected. It might be destroyed because they're killing the whole legal system. And how can you have trust in it when it's being distorted in such large ways? It's got to break if you keep bending it that far. It's going to break. So re retrospective scrutiny. P 
past actions of the president might come under renewed scrutiny. That's an assumption if he's been convicted of a felony. We could then adjust that or again play the comparison game on his political rival. Every action of a president will become under legal scrutiny. Honestly, at this point, President Trump uh, was to, if President Trump was to crap his pants at a ceremony, they'd try to convict him of 34 counts of felony, felony disturbing the peace, right? In other words, we took the same implicit response here or assumption that all president's actions are now going to come into further scrutiny now that they've taken, they've opened Pandora's box. And it's like, yeah, you're telling me, honestly, if President Trump was the one that crapped his pants during a ceremony, they'd probably try to convict him of 34 counts of felony disturbing the peace. So at some point, the opposition's going to hit back, and then and then we have this play back and forth. That would be the the president might face isolation from political allies, and so on. We can refute so the mental health coverage, the stress of the situation could affect the president's mental health. So that's going to be an assumption that you could make explicit by arguing with someone, for example, and then, of course, refute it. No, I don't think it's going to affect his mental health or, of course, compare it to his opposition. So so the corruption sure is affecting one of the president's mental health. Which one do you think is handling it worse? And then maybe you show an image of President Biden and President Trump side by side and let people decide. So so book deals or interviews. Post-conviction, there might be offers for book deals or high-profile interviews. That would be an assumption that you can see implicit from the headline or explicitly you can make explicit. And then, of course, you can refute it or change the implicit assumptions, meaning the assumption is that the book deals are legitimate. And then you can kind of change the angle on that possibly by saying, yeah, the DA may get famous like a, like a murderer might get famous. So it's like Billy the Kid writing a book about how many people he killed, or maybe more recently, like O.J. Simpson writing a book about how he would have done it, right? So, so now we're basically saying, yeah, th there could be book deals, but it's, you know, I'm just trying to twist the story of, I don't think, you know, it's a good thing. Okay, so then we could do this comparison thing using ChatGTP, using our list comparison. So what I've done here is I just copied and pasted the prompt of a uh, side-by-side table of 50 cliches and common phrases related to president and 50 cliches and common phrases related to a felony conviction. So I took president, felony conviction, two ideas from the headlines, and I want to list ideas related to them so I can put them side-by-side side and see if I can come up with a story that is going to be uh, incongru that's going to give me incongruity. Now you can then c copy these. I would usually paste them into like Excel and then copy it again and paste it into our table. So let me open up another one just to show you. And so I'd open it up, boom, and then paste it like a, like, so it shows up like a table. So use destination style. And then I would add another line over here, make it wider. And so now we have the ability to write some text over here. So now I'm just looking at these two. And as I see the side by sides, I'm going to say, hey, can I match these two up in such a way that the just position is funny? Oftentimes, this thing to me, leads my mind to think of pictures that might be generated from like AI. So the first one, leader, leader of the world of the free world doing time. So I put these two together. How could it be the leader of the free world is doing time? So I can see myself making images, the free world, showing freedom, images of freedom, doing time, the leader behind bars, lack of freedom. The leader of the free world can be locked up. So now I'm comparing this to locked up, free world, locked up. They don't seem to go together. Commander in chief caught red handed. So I tried to put these just right together. The commander in chief red handed, uh, caught red handed, we can of course make an image of Trump uh, as a commander and then having him with red hands or something like that. I can think of absurd images of Trump with red hands or something. Uh, possibly, you know, <laughs> they, they make fun of us. They say his hands are small. I don't know about it. You know, you could make all kinds of 
funny images with the hands. Now, notice that if you try to make an image of Trump, then it's going to, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Uh, uh, but you can make an image of a president and then you can take actual images of Trump and put the and then cut out the head and put it on top of your AI images. Right. That's one way that you can get around the fact that they're trying to do this weird thing where you can make an image of anybody, but not certain people and political people. They're trying not to to make an image of it. And again, I'm not trying to get into the legal system. If you get in trouble for doing that, for whatever reason, I'm just saying that's one thing you could try to do. Make an image of a politician and then use actual photos to crop the head. And then, and so we might talk about those techniques. Later. Overall, Oval Office, I compared that with doing time. So so the doing uh, the doing time in the Oval Office. So I could say the president is doing time in the Oval Office. So then again, I can imagine an image then of Trump in the Oval Office, maybe in like a jumpsuit with like, like a ball and chain on his feet, which I can't generate in the system, but I can make an image in AI of an Oval Office, of the Oval Office, and I can make an image of someone in the Oval Office, or I can just transpose someone in a jumpsuit into the picture of the Oval Office, then putting the head of Trump on the guy, right? Or something like that. Uh, so then I have behind bars with leader of the free world. The leader of the free world can't be behind bars. So again, that just position, just wordplay doesn't sound quite right, right? And image wise, we could make leader of the free world like he's picture of freedom and then behind bars, just position the next picture being behind bars, which doesn't look right. So state of the union and behind bars. So it's not good when the state of the union is given behind bars, which also leads itself to an image that we can make in like AI, some president talking at the state of the union. You can make that in AI, possibly then put Trump's head on it, right? And then having him be behind bars, making an image of someone in jail and once again, putting Trump's head on it or something like that. So you don't really need to, to, to even say anything in the speech. So, right, because if you're saying state of the union, all you have to sh do is say, hey, look, he's doing this, the president's doing the state of the union behind bars. I guess that says it all, right? He doesn't really need to say anything at this point. So, but, but it could be worse. At least, at least he didn't go up to the microphone and crap himself, <laughs> right? So I'd rather have the guy behind bars than him walking up to the microphone lying and then crapping himself, you know, but per that's my personal, like, anyways. Then we've got, let's see what else we, so it's sad day when the potential commander in chief is forced to sit and listen to a porn star talking about how he had a hard time, right? So, so here's the hard time here with the commander in chief. And again, you can imagine someone sitting in the courtroom and being miserable. And then you can imagine, you know, you can make a picture of, of a crazy porn star up on the stand telling crazy stories about past events or something like that so political so we then we have uh political arena the political arena now has bars around it the arena turning into a cat a cage fight so in other words you can imagine the political arena and then maybe you put the let make an image of the political arena and then you put a, a cage or it in bars or you put the politicians in like the ufc cage fight or something like that is what I was kind of imagining, which again, I think this to me leads to good pictures that could be generated from AI. Uh, making bail, making bail with political capital, because the only way to get the Democrat off your back uh, is to win over the voters, right? I'm just trying to compare political capital. The West Wing, the West Wing has been locked up because that's where they put the president so he can't feel, uh, f so he can't fly the coop coop. I've tried to say he flew the coop so he can't fly the coop. So I was trying to put together the idea of the West Wing is now locked up because he's now locked up in it, which you can have an image of, so he can't fly the coop, which I'm just trying to use another phrase of being wing and coop going together. And this whole thing, I think you can make images of you can make an image of the West Wing and then have Trump locked up in it and then basically have some Trump like fly, trying to fly away with a make an AI image of someone flying away with a ball and chain and then put Trump's head on it or something like that as well as right. So riding the campaign trail, 
footing the bill. So riding the cam train j- trail while in jail. I like that one just because of the rhyme. He's riding the cam while in jail. So I, let's take a look at the next technique. We're running long on time here. So then I use chat GPT, I think it is. GPT. Give me jokes related to, to, to uh, this was a, not the female president. Give me jokes. Jokes. I'm just going to say give me jokes. The prompt is 50 jokes. 50 jokes related to the president being convicted of a felony. So I'm, now I'm just doing the easy thing. I'm just saying, hey, chat GTP. I just went in here and just give me a prompt of just give me 50 jokes of, of him, a felony president, right? And, and let's see what it comes up with. So we could say, all right, if we do that, it says, why don't presidents hide their felonies? Because even the White House doesn't have enough closets. Oh, so it's not, these aren't going to be great. They're going to be joke format, but some of them could be something that you can then use as a seed idea. So I still think it's worth like reading through them sometimes. So what's the president's favorite game after a felony conviction? Hide and seek from the law. Oh, and notice, I think a lot of times these are politically tilted in a more liberal format. I frankly, it seems pretty obvious to me that most of the algorithms and whatnot have some like favorable tilts to them. So, but how does a president change a light bulb after a felony conviction? They don't. They, they, they like keeping things in the dark. Oh, like Hillary's emails that were whatever. What's the difference between the convicted president and a catfish? One's a slimy bottom feeding scum sucker and the other's just a fish. Oh, why did the president bring a ladder to court? They thought the charges were too high to reach. How does the president exercise after a felony conviction by running from their re- responsibilities? <laughs> what do you call it when the president is convicted of a felony, a historical moment and a bad day? Why does president play hide and seek after a felony? Good luck hiding. Okay. Yeah. President Trump's going to be hiding, right? You can really see this. He's gonna <laughs> I don't know. Chat GPT. So let's say puns. So now we're going to look, we're going to look at just puns. Let's just do this. So we, the prompt is 50 puns. So now I'm just saying, great, go right to the puns. Last time I did puns related to president and then puns related to a felon. This time I said, give me 50 puns related to the president, uh, 50 puns related to the president as a felon. Let's just, I think I did it. Well, I did it two ways. Here's 50 puns related to the president. And so you could combine those with puns related to felon. But then I think it might have even just been better to just say, give me 50 puns related to the president being a felon. And this is what it gave me. What do you call a president in jail? The commander in brief? Why do felon presidents hack clocks, hate clocks? Because time always seems to be against them. What's a felon president's favorite kitchen appliance? The escape hatch. How does a felon president uh, decorate their new home? with selfie F patrol, sorry. So most of these are pretty stupid, but every once in a while they give you a good one. I also did the rhyming. So my prompt here was to give me rhymes, which here's the prompt. I just said, uh, hold on a second. Give me 50 rhyme phrases uh, related to president who is a felon. And it gave me gavels, gravel, trouble from the judge's gavel. Commander in handcuffs, leadership locked up. State of the cell, a president's address behind bars. Veto and the convict, presidential power meets penal consequences. Oval office, crimes in the highest office. They, they rhymed office with off, offense. Okay, I was going to say. Rhyming office with office, that's not ov- oval offense. I don't know. Capital capture. Caught in the seat of government. Pleading the chef. The president's courtroom appeal, White House to big house, from executive mansion to prison, right? Okay, not a, not a lot of them are great, but every once in a while you get you get a good one that might work well.